Howdy folks, today we're going to be talking about arguments, basically looking at the components that make up an argument, what an argument is, and how do we start to analyze them um, from a rhetorical standpoint. So the skills we're specifically looking at today is the ability to identify and explain claims and evidence within an argument. Today we're going to specifically look at claims. An argument is not just two people disagreeing. Um, it's not just you having an argument with your parents about cleaning your room or whatever it is high school kids do these days with their parents. Um, an argument is the ability to make an assertion or a thesis and then back that idea up by explaining it with evidence and support. Um, this is a very common graphic organizer for what arguments look like if we were to put them visually into a diagram. So we have our main idea kind of as our focal point and then off of that main idea we have our reasons or our claims that we're going to state that make this thing true or that make this thing appear like it is a good idea. And then attached to each one of those claims um, is going to be a piece of evidence, some support that really makes uh, this claim seem valid and in turn making our main idea seem valid. Let's look at each one of those individually. So the main idea, also known as the thesis, um, is sort of the central point of any argument. Um, it has to be arguable and it has to be supportable, right? Um, there's a big difference between saying the United States has a healthcare system as a thesis and the United States has a troubled healthcare system as a thesis. One of those is arguable, the other is not. And that's what we're going to start looking at throughout this course is the nuance of very specific and singular words can change the course of an entire argument. Um, so when we're analyzing thesis statements and we're building thesis statements, we need to be precise because these uh, main ideas guide the whole reason why we are looking and reading an argument or why we are building an argument ourselves. And they become the central point of organization. Uh, and I will say really briefly as a, a side note to organization is that these main ideas can be, as you'll find, anywhere in the text, especially as we start reading more complex texts. Authors like to start breaking the traditional molds of what a standard argument looks like. Now, I will say in academics, um, there is a very formula, formulaic approach to writing an argument in a paper, um, and that's just kind of industry standard. That happens in third grade, that happens in high school, that happens in college, that happens in your doctoral degree, is you kind of organize your main idea towards the beginning of your paper. But we'll look at examples over the semester where it isn't at the beginning. And so just don't be surprised. The author isn't in doing it wrong. The author is just doing it differently. Um, so supporting that main idea are our reasons or our claims. Um, claims are used to build an argument. I like the analogy of, of like a structure or here's our roof, our main idea, and then we are going to support that with claims and reasons. Here's why I believe what I do. Um, there's many different types of claims and each reason focuses on supporting this main idea. You wouldn't build a house with an extra wall sitting out over here. Everything has to be connected to your central idea. Um, and not all claims that we're going to use to build our argument are necessarily created equal. Not all main ideas are created equal. Um, so with a little practice, we're going to evaluate a couple claims right now. So take a look at these four sentences. You can pause and read them to yourself. I want you to evaluate whether each is really a good arguable statement or is it too easily verifiable to develop an effective argument. So if you read through these and you realized only the first one is actually decent enough to write probably a good argument or a good paper about, um, you'd be right. Let's look at these other three and try to figure out why they're not quite good enough. Charter schools are an alternative to public education. Well, check, an end of paper, right? That's a statement of fact. There's no argument, there's no development needed to back that up. This one's a little bit trickier. People who read novels are more likely to attend sport events and movies than those who do not. Now, I'd like to see the research that backs that up. Um, but again, 
this would be a pretty simple thing to verify or not verify with, you know, uh, one piece of evidence. So I wouldn't say that this is a good um, claim yet. So this one, owners of trucks and SUVs should have to pay an energy surcharge. There is an arguable statement. Clearly, it's arguable. Clearly, people can pull in support to back up their ideas and opinions. Um, and we could build a lot off of that, whether we agree with it or disagree with it. Um, so in addition to claims being kind of good or bad, are they, are they valid or are they too easily verifiable? There's different types of claims that we can start to use to analyze how an author is really building their argument. Um, first claim is a claim of fact. Basically, it's just asserting that this is true or not true. Um, so for example, you can't really argue whether the US country, US is a country or not, but you can argue whether our healthcare system is in turmoil or not. I could state that as a fact. I could say that our healthcare system is in turmoil or not. I'm stating that as a claim of fact. Um, and it may or may not be true, kind of based on where your perspective is, right? There's a lot of let's say gray area and that word turmoil. What do I mean by turmoil here? So this would require a lot more qualification for me as a writer to explain what do I mean. There could also be claims of value where it's basically just saying something is good or bad, better or worse. So this could be like, which is the best movie of 2020? What ice cream is best? What politician is best? What idea is best? What car is best? X, Y, or Z. Um, kind of take your pick here. Uh, but the tricky thing with claims of value, if you use them yourselves, is really you should be establishing criteria and standards. So if we look at which ice cream is best, what are we going to use to evaluate that? Is it just going to be my personal preference? Or are we going to compare flavor profiles or um, ice cream pairings with dinner pairings? I don't know. That's got to be what you, the arguer, decides. And lastly, there's this idea of a claims of policy. Policy just meaning how people kind of govern themselves or are governed. Um, it's proposing a change, basically. And usually claims of policy begin with claims of fact. So this is this way, and so we need to do this. Um, for example, there's too much homework in high school, so teachers should you know, limit the amount of homework they give to 20 minutes a night something like that. That would be a claim that I'm saying this should be considered as we move forward as a society. Um, let's take a look at these in, in action. So this comes from a article called The C Word in the Hallways, published in 1999 by Newsweek. Um, if you're interested in the topic here, which I think is really cool, um, really very important, you should go read the entire article. Um, so this says, the saddest phrase I've read in a long time is this one, psychology, psychological autopsy. That is what doctors call it when a kid kills himself, and they go back over the plowed ground of his short life and discover all the hidden markers that led to the rope, the blade, the gun. There's a plague on all our houses, and since it doesn't announce itself with lumps or spots or protest marches, it's gone unremarked in the quiet suburbs and busy cities where it has been laying waste. So right there, we've got a value judgment. Um, he's saying that there is this plague and it is bad. Hasn't quite said what it is yet, but he's saying there is a plague. Um, then we have a statement of fact. The number of suicides and homicides committed by teenagers, most often young men, has exploded in the last three decades. Again, that's pretty. that would be a verifiable claim. So it's obviously not this author's main claim that they're using um, in their thesis, their argument, um, but it's one of these supporting claims that they're using to back up their ideas. Until it has become commonplace to have black bordered photographs in yearbooks and murder suspects with acne problems, and everyone searches for reasons and scapegoats and solutions, most often punitive. Yet one solution continues to elude us, and that is ending the ignorance about mental health, moving it to the margins of care and into the mainstream where it belongs. There's a policy change. Hey, we've got this problem. Like, statement of fact, suicides are a problem. Solution? Let's start talking about it a little bit more. Let's put it into the mainstream. All right. And the last little bit um, that we'll start getting into more later in the semester, um, 
but since it does connect to themes, I want to talk about it now, is the idea of evidence. So basically each thesis, each main idea of a paper, hopefully there's only one or one complex idea, has to be supported by claims. And those claims have to be supported by evidence. Um, it helps convince an audience. There are so many different types of claim of evidences that we'll get into. But the thing that I want you to know now is we're thinking about authors and perspective in writing. Well, the authors are going to cater what type of evidence they use to their audience, right? If I know that this is going out to this group of people, what evidence am I going to use that's going to be more convincing than something else, right? If I'm talking to preschoolers, I'm probably not going to be bringing up academic um, research, right? We have to cater our evidence to our audience. All right. And lastly here, I'll let you guys kind of take a read through this, move my page over this. You can just see how this breaks down in regular writing. Um, this is a paper that I actually wrote um, for my master's degree um, about standardized testing and school. So you can see that I've got my main idea very simply right here at the beginning. And then I start bouncing between reasons and pieces of evidence. And then I make a claim of value. And then I back that up with evidence. And so all of this really just helps us start to analyze arguments, right? That's our that's the point that we're getting to in this class is how do we break down someone else's argument to see what they did and how they did it and did they do it well? So here are the big takeaways as a just as a wrap up. Um, basically, arguments are composed of main ideas, theses, claims and reasons supporting those, and pieces of evidence. Not necessarily always in this order, right? Um, and then we can analyze claims a little bit more deeply and break them down into claims of fact, claims of value, or claims of policy. So things that are we're saying are true or not true, things that we're passing an evaluation or judgment on, and then policy meaning we are suggesting this to change. All right. Good luck, folks.